Hello. A bit unexpected, but, um, yeah, I, uh, had some extra time, and normally I wouldn't have all of my stuff together, but my truck's messed up, so my truck's emptied out, and all my gear is in here, so I'm able to do a few videos that I wanted to do, but haven't had the right opportunity to do. So, um, kind of like how I did the spike video, or the gaps, I'm going to do with lanyards. Um, I've used a lot of different kinds of lanyards, and uh, some of the newer stuff I won't have, like the Zillion, and then... Uh, like the ART positioner and stuff, but uh, for the most part, I've got pretty much all of them, except for maybe the dual one that runs both ways. Um, I don't have that one, but, uh, or like I have the setup for a steel core, but yeah, so I'm gonna get into it, but right now we are in a tornado watch, so if something crazy happens, the video ends, just know it, like, probably is for a good reason. So, um, Let's get into it. I don't expect there to be too many people in this video. Um, because of the timing. But, um, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll do the video. And maybe it'll be something people can look back at. A lot like Vegas. What's up, buddy? I am in Missouri. So we are getting some rough weather right now but you know it's still sunny outside but they're saying like the weather's the heat is way too high it's incredibly unstable but uh first thing I'm going to do is I am going to and the reason I started all of this is because I needed to um, switch out my lanyard I have a new um, the new rope for my lanyard from Gap that they sent me. So I want to switch that out. I love these new clips. They're totally blacked out. But they have the safety. But they're really easy. It's just like as you grab it, it opens. So really nice lanyards. But uh, I need to switch this out real quick before we start. And then I'll go straight into the uh, the very, very old lanyards to the newer stuff. So um, let's do this real quick. It'll just take it'll just take a minute to switch this thing out. So I got this. This is the Buckingham one that I prefer to use. Um, the reason for it is because they took this piece that used to run like this. Damn it, the spring down that. And they've turned it sideways so much easier to get a hold of you don't miss it um, it's really easy to get the trigger to work so it's got a little hole inside there for a spring and the spring sits in that little you see that groove right there around the hole so I'll slide that in there hopefully this doesn't turn into a big process but uh these positioners have a air on you to uh, show which way to go. So, put that in there, put that in there. Then we just gotta get this into that hole. There we go. Then you have, Monty, lay down. You have one of these pens on these, the adjustable lanterns. And the way they work, you almost have to screw them in all the way through first. Oh, I gotta make sure it springs as well. Yeah, kind of like that. And then you screw it in the rest of the way. I don't even have like the actual right tools to be doing this. I have the right Allen. But uh, so you screw it in the rest of the way. And then this is going to be, when we start talking lanyards, this is going to be your newest versions, you know. Um, and the way these work, they go through, they bite down, they tighten up all the way. 
most of them. And then they have a safety nut that goes on to them that locks them into place. So, take that. I'm using a little pipe wrench. Okay, so now we're set. Clip into it. Now we're just rocking it. Actually, I want to put that the other way. I made that mistake last time. Up through. It's clipped out this way. Okay, so now this lanyard's set, and we can get into the full lanyard talk. Let's see if there's anybody else here. I'll show you one more time at the end. Let me check comments real quick. DQ, what's up, buddy? So, let's do this. This is going to be kind of fun. So, I'll show you them as I got them. When, like, my dad was first doing tree work and stuff, they were using some pretty janky lanyards. Um, the stuff that they were doing, a lot of times, uh, the buck straps were... Actually, I, I think I may have a leather one. I have a leather buck strap. That's actually maybe the oldest. But then you get into stuff like this. And these things can be used as lanyards, but I would use them in a different way. They would use them... On their sides and then as they're going up as they're going up they're more like pinching the rope together and they just find one that works for them but what I would suggest if you were using something like this would be a cinch up so you would cinch it and then run it through so then as you're going up it's just a safety thing if you was to slip you have it tied on to you and you work your way up and kind of hold this here as you do it. But uh, these old ones were not adjustable. It was a stationary lanyard and there was nothing you could really do about it. They're just a piece of rope with two hooks. So uh, hang on just a second. So uh, then you get when we get into the mechanical stuff, that's where it kind of gets a little fun, but uh, stationary. Then you get into this kind of stuff. There's a bunch of different stationary ones. The, the leather one may actually be newer because it was adjustable. It's more like a belt, and you could extend it out, flip it up. They're pretty cool. Um, I don't know where that's at. I got to look for that. I may have gave it to somebody, but... Uh, Maybe it was my brother and I'll get it back. Get that off starting to get a little warm. So then you get into lanyards like this. Stuff like this you can still use in like a bucket um, as your anchor. Then you get into things like this, which are also stationary lanyards, but they have the fall arrest things in them. So if it took impact, this would rip apart and extend and take some of the impact of the shock load and that's the theory I believe behind them but uh this is a good one for you know another one for a bucket to use in the bucket um, as your like back clip in spot so uh, I've used this so I've been I've been through many many lanyards I've made many many lanyards and I've used a bunch of different kinds so there's just there's like endless ways to mess with lanyards to uh, come up with them so you have your very old where the clips are all funky and everything just some old two strand twisted rope then you get into stuff like this that's got some fall arrest stuff made into it now we move into lanyards that are adjustable which is pretty cool um, this one's still kind of new well, it's not new, but it's still got it's still orange and very old. But uh, the way these work, and I'm sure anybody that's been climbing trees for any length of time has used these adjustable knot. So that's the way they're set up. This one's on a loop. 
and this one's on a Sony, and they have a slide knot. So you would adjust this knot out to however long you need your lanyard, and it took it to where you don't have specific size lanyards to where, you know, big tree lanyard, middle, middle tree lanyard, small tree lanyard. Now you have one lanyard that can be adjusted for every single tree that you do. So, uh, really, really nice um, when we started getting these kind. I was stoked. I thought these were like so, this is like so high tech. Um, let me read comments. I don't want to get behind on them. I should get off topic, but I've been wondering why do I see so many saws that are painted black? Are they modified saws or something? A lot of times they've been modified some, but it's just, if you're a guy that goes around and subs and works with other people, it's just a way to differentiate your saw from someone else's. So, that's it. And... As a guy, you take something and block it out, it looks a little tougher. That's probably as simple and as honest as that gets. But, uh, that's it. What's up, Turbo? What is going on, man? So, adjustable, rope lanyard, dough clips, sewn eye. Um, these were so great. But these clips are so heavy. They're so heavy. The rope is pretty stiff, um... Yeah, these things get pretty heavy, especially if you're dealing with two clips. So, these were awesome, though. And I used these. I've used these longer than I've used anything. Is this. So, you nick them, and you got to go buy a new one. That was always a... Uh, it always sucked to have to go do that. But, uh... Then we start to get into... Prussics. And single line. So... Before we do, before we start to introduce, um, like, a micro pulley for tending, we want regular, normal, um, pressing knots. So, I'm going to show you a couple different ways that this will work, and a couple ways where you can multi, you know, multi-use a couple tools, but, um, so we were set up here. And we got us a lanyard. It's just a rope with a thimble on the end of it and a carabiner. Then you have a pressic and a hook. And that's as simple as it gets. It goes around. The nice thing about this, you can tie it in, clip, clip. It is adjustable here. What's left? And you could actually use it both ways by putting a clip at the other end because of the way that pressic knot works. Someone just told me the name of this pressic knot and I forgot it already. But uh yeah, that is you're still when you're when you're working, you are still having to use both hands to adjust them. Well, no, maybe you could use your body weight and just one hand to go out, but to tend slack up, you were always having to hold the end of the rope and pull back up. So but you have moved into not as much rope because you're using it on a single line instead of an end endless loop and having it doubled and also you know without those big heavy clips we're into carabiners and little pressing cords so we've eliminated a bunch of weight in the system which is really really nice well with a simple rope and you can make your own lanyard if you just got a piece of rope got a couple carabiners and a hand ascender so what I would say would be same way as using a rope grab any kind because that's all hand descender is, is a, a different form of a rope grab. I would hook it on like this and then it goes from there up to your clip. So you clipped in, then you turn your other carabiner on this. There's a hole there and it will help keep the rope locked in so it can't come out um, and keep everything aligned really nice but what you end up with is you're clipped in both ways here and here around the tree and you're able to adjust 
it's not as easy because you know it, the hand sender you got to really pull the trigger open that to come to come down to get it extended out but to go back up it's very simple it goes up so you can do that same thing with any kind of a grab but because it's got that double locking system on it it's not as efficient so after all that you start to realize well the hand descender is pretty cool but it's it's not efficient enough so you go back to the prusik okay and the prusik works well and we've eliminated the weight but the problem we still have with it is that tending the slack still requires two hands what's up ground pounder uh i don't think your lanyard is life support if you're you know a lot of times i don't know i'm pretty sure it probably is the the worry with a lanyard or with a hand ascender is uh, the aggressiveness of the teeth. So I wouldn't tell anybody to go climb on one of these either. You know, but it's being used as a lanyard, it's fine. So definitely not talking about using it as a primary climbing system. That's why you should always have the two points. But as a lanyard, different story. So this worked really good. We were set up with the Prusik, but, no, what's up, Dan? Yeah, we're just farting around talking about lanyards, because I got them all out right now, and I was doing a switch out. We eliminated weight. We got lighter clips, less rope, still as much adjustability. We lost a lot of weight, so, but we stuck these two hands to tend our slack back up. So now we take this system and we introduce a micro pulley and it allows us to get what we want. So we move to something like this. Basically the same thing with the Prusik, a little different knot, but the way this works, it comes out when you're applying your weight, that knot extends out and holds. But if you're wanting to tend slack, you see how it comes in, it goes into the micro pulley. The micro pulley presses into this, compresses it, and allows you to tend slack with one hand. All the way to the top with ease. So now We've achieved everything we could really that we needed to. We're able to tend our slack with one hand. We've lost all that weight. It's just a perfect, perfect setup. But sometimes these get a little jammed up and we want a little better action. And that's the that that's where the rope grabs come back. They make adjustable rope grab lanyards and they work very well. They're really nice. I prefer them over anything else. So this was my old lanyard that I just took off my saddle right before I started this video with you guys. Oh, old lanyard rope. Um, as you can see, it's got a few nicks in it and a few nicks in it and stuff but it's still in really really good condition so just another liner so what I did is I took a rope grab that I had it used to have a wire that engaged this back that's weed eater string my guy Dan Dan the tree man I think gave me that idea so the way they work is you apply weight back just like I was showing you on the one before there's this little hooked cam in there that goes like a cue and as you apply weight back it smashes it into the rope and doesn't allow the rope to move through it's got little ridges on it inside there you see them so now 
you're able to adjust it out. Hang on. Adjust it out with one one thumb. It's really nice to hold. Gives you a good grip. Works very well. Engages quickly. Don't have issues with it slipping. Um, but this to hit that with your thumb, that's pretty skinny. You know, and the wire being right on it. Didn't really like that. That would have been my complaint with these. Is the cable or the wire being right there? I didn't like and I didn't like how skinny that was like it just didn't seem practical the way it hooked up so the way these work is they gotta run like almost upward like straight up and down because of the way they're orientated with your with your clip they either have to run almost up and down with your system or like because of the way your D-rings set you know when they clip in, they, they run upward, so there's almost, they're almost in a bind sometimes, in a weird twist. And I feel like Buckingham figured it out by taking this thing and turning it. So I'll show you that. And that's the one that I use the most. And is my favorite one. Lay down, now. He just forgets and gets all crazy. Okay, um, yeah, so like I was showing you on that last one, now look, like I said, this thing, it's a bit bulky. Look how small that is in comparison. Very nice. What they did is eliminated a bunch of metal. It was unnecessary and didn't need to be there. They still have the same cam design, but they've taken this, which used to be that way, and they've twisted it around. So now you're, hicked in, you're clipped in like that, and it's just super easy to hit that to get into that with your thumb. You can grab it right on the side and it just locks into place. Works so nice. So you would be hooked in like this and if you need need some rope, your thumb is all it takes. Tend it back, it tends back really nice. They've cut a bit of a groove in there to allow for it to like pull back even nicer. Um, and then they've actually, so that you don't get in those binds, those weird binds, like I was talking about the other one, they've actually cut a little notch in there, so if your rope can come over at a, at a nicer bend, and it can still stay aligned and on your climbing system better. So, uh, this will be my favorite. This is, uh, like I said, the Buckingham Buck. You can see the difference between the two in size. Um, and... And the way they're designed much bigger cam so that would be for the most part it but if we're technically talking lanyards then any climbing system any climbing setup is a lanyard Technically, so another lanyard setup that I like to use and have used many, many times, I've used the zigzag, I've used my rope wrench, which was a little difficult, I just unpopped the wrench and ran the wrench upside down, flipped backwards, um, so it doesn't engage. I'll show you guys how to do that one day, but uh... The other one would be like the Grigri. Another simple set setup. It's a, a loaded cam system. Got a trigger to uh, release your weight and to let you out. It's very easy to tin slack up. So all you need is a rope, a couple carabiners. So anytime you have a climbing system, you have a lanyard. So I would say if you're somebody who um, is doesn't set your ropes up in the tree, you're going to take a climbing system up. So why not take your climbing system on the way up and slap it around in a cinch down SRT setup or a door and use it on the way up. That could save you. And that's all my silly 
little tips and videos like that's all I'm looking to do I'm just looking to like maybe change somebody's mind on taking an unnecessary risk I've taken too many I've been more than lucky and like I'm sure not everybody out there is going to have my luck when it comes to that. So, I'm just, I don't know, trying to uh, pay it forward. Because uh, I really didn't have anybody ever telling me, watch out, don't do this. So, uh, I got to experience everything on my own. And nowadays you have YouTube as a reference. And there's no need to uh, have to experience it all on your own. So, uh Guys, that's my full get down on lanyards. Man, I really wish I would have had that leather lanyard. I don't know where it's at. It was basically a belt um, with these really weird clips on it. So, let's do this. We went into this. We talked about... I, what was that? Hey, lay down. We talked about a bunch of different lanyards, but we went from this to this. So, um, there's a lot of different advancements in between these two. So, if you found any of this useful, entertaining, or just, uh, something to do you don't mind hitting that thumb button that would be really cool you definitely don't have to um oh something awesome happened i've had the worst luck lately trucks broke down all that other bs but something good happened finally well that's not true my guy gp hooked me up with mix the other day during live feed and i'm still juiced on this like this is crazy you are the man so uh this isn't the only good thing that's happened but i have thought that my knee ascender has been gone for two to three years i've built a new one out of a foot ascender and a bungee and a foot loop but look what i found today Oh yeah. My climb bag has a secret pouch apparently in the back to like put the backpack I don't even know what it's for. But somehow this got stuffed into that. And as I was getting all the ropes out to wrap them up and look for lanyard ropes, extra ones so I can make lanyards for this video. I felt something in the back of the pouch. I'm like, well, what is that? And I dug my arm down in there. And I was like, huh, something's in there. If I'm being honest, what I thought I was going to find would be I'm missing a rope wrench. That's what I thought I was going to find. When I pulled this out, I was so stoked. So, for those that don't know what it is, this is Haas's classic foot ascender with an adjustable foot loop wear and tear pad and bungee it's uh it's just the best knee ascender that i've used and i am beyond stoked to do this like to, to use this again so uh yeah just figured i'd bring that up because i have not been having the greatest luck and then i hit the lottery with this so super stoked about that and uh yeah that's about it i just wanted to show you guys this let you know that uh i have a video finished up for you guys i do want to let this i'll let this live simmer for like maybe a day so be looking forward to tomorrow the double fall video with me and mike um we'll be out and um and I'll get working on the next part, but yeah, just kind of works out that I have all my stuff here. I have a few other ideas for videos that I want to do for you guys. And if you guys have anything that you want me to discuss, especially if it's on different types and different kinds of things, 
let me know now because everything is here and I this is not what happens usually my stuff is very carefully and tightly packed into my truck so that I have everything at all times I never have my stuff like this so if there is something please let me know tell me ahead of time I don't mind taking the time and making a video so um, a few of these comments I don't care for is a primary flip line adjuster. I was considering putting it on my bridge for adjustable bridge. And the pencil one. I like that buck. The Buckingham is really, really nice. I really like it. It's compact. It's real solid, and uh, it works off that spring concept. I didn't even talk about that. The fact that the wire isn't right there in the way, and it works off of a spring, even better. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing I didn't talk about, Ground Pounder, is a wire core. Um, that's what this was that I showed you. So, that's a wire core adjustable lanyard for this smaller wire core stuff that I have. And I was going to make a lanyard at one point out of it. But, I'm like, nah. I don't feel like taking the time to do it. I have this like crazy wire core stuff. I've got a whole roll of it. So, uh, yeah. I used it for a zip line for a while when my daughter was younger. Buckstrap for pole work is that leather item? Yeah. Yeah. Um, dang, I wish I could find it. Because, really, if we're being honest, until recently, I would imagine that a lot of pole work products and equipment had integrated into tree climbing. Because guys were getting it from friends, like from electric companies. There weren't stores to buy stuff all the time, especially for me. So, <laughs> like this saddle. I have a saddle in here that I rarely, if ever, use. It's almost brand new. It's one of them older Weaver style. So, it's like two completely different style saddles. But, here I'll show you. One's a, a butt strap or a seat saddle. And then... Then you get, which is like this, so you have a seat to set in. And then these straps kind of go up between your thighs to kind of hold it into legs. So you end up with, with this, and then the straps come up through here. And then what you're doing is you're like setting down, and your D rings and your tie in point are putting pressure on this and on this strap, and you're setting onto that butt strap. So They've moved away from this style, and I bought this for like 50 bucks, I think. It was brand new when I bought it. Had never been used. And I gave him $50. It was just a random dude that apparently used to work for Townsend or something, and he must have took his saddle home. And he stopped by my job and was like, hey, you wanna buy this? I was like, yeah, no, not really. And he begged me to buy it, and I'm like, dude, I don't need it, because I have a couple of those. Um, but he sent me the sob story good enough that I felt compelled to go ahead and buy it off of him. And plus the price was cheap, so that kind of saddle I still use on days where it's all rainy and nasty, and I don't want to get my good one messed up. So then you move into another weaver one, which then moves into, instead of a butt, like a seat, you have leg straps with bungees that run vertical on the back of your thighs. And then you have leg straps. So it's grabbing your thighs 
and then it's got a strap that goes up into your waist on each one and then the suspenders add a lot of, uh, of support just in general so guys I'm gonna end this because I don't want this to go too long what carabiners do you use on your lanyards I don't worry about a crazy like I have some cheap ones um, I like a a real easy quick to use one for clipping in all the time so like I prefer these these are my favorite so the way they work they have a little safety clip back here you gotta push that down to get this to open so if, if I don't push that this doesn't open but real quickly if I go grab it like in my hand and then do that it opens so it's real easy to use you just press against the back clip it on you don't want to have in my opinion I don't want to have to do the up down twist to clip every time so for my for my one where it attaches just a cheaper one it uh, what's the weight of it like 300 pounds is the weight limit for these oh it says safe workload so 300 pounds but they're screw locking so I put it on I clip it on and then I screw lock that shut so that I don't get in a bind it opens up comes off I want something very secure for the the Prusik or the adjuster or whatever it is that you're using but I want something quick and agile for the spot where I'm clipping and unclipping and clipping and unclipping and clipping I want something more agile so that would be what I would use um, or I would use something more along the lines of um, of like this I don't even know what the safe workload for this is but see I'm always have I always have my regular stuff on my climb system and I don't really oh wow yeah 23 kilonewtons but very simple you know it's no extra you know stuff to it I clip out as many times as I can I try not to clip into me like this I try to clip like this and out that way I don't get in a bind and it doesn't pop off as easy um, but you can press against your body and like open the gate up or your climbing system so I try to clip in and out but that's about it um, I don't want something that's real hard to use for the end point I want to be as efficient as I can be so uh, like if I was to compare that to something like this see, something like this I have to go up Hang on. See, and then they look the exact same, so you don't know what's the end. It gets so aggravating. So, you gotta go up, or no, down, twist, then open. And to have to do that every time that you use this, it gets a little, uh, like I'm not a fan. So even the old ones were very simple to use. They're that same style, like I was talking about, where you grab it, and you gotta unlock air to get it to open there. See, but you can grab it with your fist very quickly and it's easy to use it's efficient these are heavy as hell though I bet those are the weight of about 20 of those orange ones you're right unscrumptious sloth has has what carabiners do you use on your lasers there's triple air snap I have a new tribe saddle it's pretty good monkey beaver should be uh, 15 kilonewton bro which is 225 pounds basically what no what 
Dude, I thought a kilonewton was the same as 150 pounds. Am I thinking of the wrong one? I thought a kilonewton was closer to 150 pounds. One kilonewton is 200. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, that's and that's 23 kilonewtons, so it's it's like way overkill. Because I know what my rigging clips say in kilonewtons, and it's not like nothing crazy. Like here's a rigging beaner right here from Fusion, and it is rated. Well, you can see how big and bulky. It was like sixty dollars for this damn thing. Um, let's see what it is in kilonewtons. Forty-one kilonewtons. So that's a triple action, which I'm not the biggest fan of. A lot of times I like it to be able to screw lock. So this is my other rigging carabiner, and probably my favorite by far of the two. Um, the fact that I have to do all this to use that every time is cool, but eh, this one is heavier. But let's see what the weight is on this one. You can tell this one gets used more. 50 kilonewtons. And it screw locks. So as long as you got the screw down, it just works as a regular lanyard or a regular carabiner. Clips open. So, um, yeah, you see how dirty it gets. You can see the difference in color where it's like shiny here and like dark on all these other spots. But uh, no, you can't. Not in the camera. But let me put these back, guys. This was fun, as always. I've said I'm gonna get off here about fifty thousand times. So, yeah, I'm going to get off it. And this, you guys, stay safe. And, uh, you guys want a new video? I'll just put it up now, if you guys want it. If you have content to watch. And you don't really care i'll hold off but uh yeah i have a video ready for you guys if you guys want it when i finish this up i will go ahead and just upload it for you guys i'm sure these two videos end up fighting each other for views and i won't get the greatest but i'm not worried about it anymore youtube is aggravating if you worry about views and i'm over it new video right after this so um, stay safe I'll catch you guys next time it's been fun turbo ground pounder a lot like Vegas um, see who always unscrumptious slaw Dan you guys thanks a lot DQ is here so uh, I can't remember who was the first one here somebody else I think it was a lot like, yeah, a lot like Vegas was first here. Guys, thanks for hanging out. You guys are the best. I'll catch you soon. If you give me a good idea, we'll do another live very soon. But I'm all out of ideals. Stay safe.